Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us for another segment. Yeah, you know, moderate to severe fatigue affects nearly 50% of psoriatic arthritis patients and greatly impacts their quality of life. Well, joining us here on the program is Dr. Alyssa Johnson. She's joining us here from Janssen Research and Development to discuss a new publication in arthritis research and therapy that supports the ability of Tremphia to reduce fatigue in PSA patients. Welcome to the program. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you so much. And, and I'm so happy to speak with you today about this really important topic for patients with psoriatic arthritis. Well, I mentioned that you were joining us here from Janssen Research and Development. Give us a bit of your professional background and talk about the role that you fill at Janssen. Sure, I'd be happy to. So um, I uh, am the disease area strategy lead for rheumatology at Janssen, which means that i um, Across our portfolio, I help the organization think about what are the disease indications where there is significant unmet need and and how can we best match up our portfolio of um, therapies with the unmet need in rheumatology. Um, I am a rheumatologist um, by training. I also have a PhD in immunology. So... um, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a very um, satisfying, it's very satisfying work for me to do where I get to help the patients that um, I used to see in clinic by thinking about pathways of disease and mechanisms and how to apply scientific advancements to improve the lives of patients with rheumatic disease. How does psoriatic arthritis differ from the other forms that we commonly hear about, the rheumatoid and the osteo? Yeah, that's a great question. So the first way to think about it is that osteoarthritis is generally wear and tear arthritis with some subsequent inflammation, whereas psoriatic arthritis and rheumatoid arthritis are primarily inflammatory arthritis, meaning the inflammation comes first and then starts to cause damage in the joints. Rheumatoid arthritis is different than psoriatic arthritis. So psoriatic arthritis is, as the name would suggest, the arthritis that's associated with the skin disease psoriasis, but it does have some really distinct features compared to rheumatoid arthritis. So what is distinctive about psoriatic arthritis is that it is Uh, a disease that affects multiple domains. So you can get the skin disease of psoriasis. You can get arthritis in your peripheral joints, which looks a lot like rheumatoid arthritis, but you can also get arthritis in your spinal joints, so your spine, and as well as in the joints of your pelvis, so-called axial spondylitis. And and this is very different than than what you would see in rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. In PSA as well, you can get inflammation of the soft tissues, the tendons and the ligaments and where they insert in the bone. So so there are some really distinct features of psoriatic arthritis, and it really is a multi-domain disease. When it comes to this fatigue that we're talking about affecting nearly 50% of these PSA patients, it would seem that just the, the inflammation, the discomfort, the, the quality of life would, of course, uh, produce moderate to severe fatigue. Is that across the board with arthritis or is psoriatic arthritis more prone to, to produce this severe fatigue? Yeah, that's, that's another great question. So we see with all of our rheumatic diseases an association between these inflammatory diseases and really severe fatigue. But, but I think you're right that, that um, one of the key questions is how much of that fatigue is actually due directly to the, the pain of the disease and how much it is really a separate domain, a separate manifestation of the disease. And, and I do think that's one of the interesting things explored in this particular article is not just, you know, is there an impact of treating the fatigue, but how much of that impact is actually due directly to improving the joint pain versus an independent effect on the fatigue. So let's talk about this this article. Exactly how was this fatigue addressed historically and how was it addressed differently uh, in studies with Tremphia? Yeah, so, um, you know, physicians, rheumatologists have been aware that their patients are suffering from fatigue for quite some time. 
and and therefore over the the last several years there has really been an um, increased um, effort to really um, rigorously study this fatigue. And so in this study, the assessment that was used is called the facet fatigue. And this is a patient reported outcome, basically asks the patient, you know, ha about fatigue symptoms over the last seven days. And it has been validated in psoriatic arthritis specifically to assess the degree of um, fatigue within this disease. And so I think what's, what's changing which is really positive. Measures like facet fatigue are starting to be included in um, randomized controlled trials of um, novel therapies, so we can get an assessment specifically about how therapies are improving fatigue. And so in this study, gesalchimab was shown to provide clinically meaningful um, improvement in fatigue um, in the gesalchimab treated patients versus placebo, and that these were shown at week 24, but then sustained out to week 52. So was there a significant reduction in this fatigue, uh, moderate, and did that vary based on the severity of the psoriasis in each patient? Yeah, so um, there was, uh, it has been previously determined what a clinically meaningful change in the fatigue score would be, and we the gesalchimab provided more patients versus placebo with that clinically meaningful improvement in fatigue. So um, the gesalchimab treated patients, there was 50 to 60 percent improvement um, or 50 to 60 percent of patients had that clinically meaningful change in fatigue versus placebo, where it was you know, more like 35 to 45 percent of patients. So more patients in the gefelkimab treated group actually had clinically meaningful change in their fatigue versus placebo. Um, it, it is a really great question about whether it mattered how inflamed they were at baseline. And so that's why when the studies were, were done, um, we, we, ad we adjust for, you know, um, some of the baseline differences in mm -hmm. patients. But I think it's a really important question to, to further explore. Um, what was interesting about this study is that there was a, a statistical analysis then done to determine how much of the improvement in fatigue was um, directly due to effects of gesalchimab versus how much of it was because the joint pain improved or because the disease activity improved. And in fact, you know, one to two thirds of the impact that's being seen on gesalchimab and fatigue is actually direct and, and not due to um, improvements in the ACR20, which is a measure of arthritis or the MDA, which is a, a global measure of, of remission. So there were really independent effects on the facet fatigue score that couldn't be attributed just to the, the intermediate effects on joints or on other um, domains of disease. What about some of the, the psychological and maybe social aspects of the, the participants in the study and some of their expectations? Could those be contributing factors? Yeah, I mean, that was not directly addressed in this study. The, the, the intermediate factors that were specifically addressed were joints as well as the MDA, which is really more on um, objective physical things that the physician might measure, and, and the C-reactive protein concentration, which is a biomarker of inflammation. But, but yeah, that's a really interesting question about, you know, um, how um, a, a patient's, um, how other, uh, other things that might come up on a patient reported outcome might uh, impact this particular um, aspect and, and would be a very interesting um, future uh, future study to, to really look at that in depth. I will say that in the overall Discover program, there were uh, meaningful effects seen on other PRO assessments as well. So overall, they are all tracking, but, but how they are related and how they're independent would really have to be separately studied. Well, give us a website where we can learn more about Janssen and about this, uh, this study and uh, many, uh, many other articles that uh, may be addressed on the website as well. Yes, I will refer you to uh, the website arthritis-research.biomedcentral.com. Well, Dr. Johnson, I appreciate you joining us here on the program. I'm hoping that we'll, uh, we can get an opportunity to speak again. 
Great. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate you uh, helping us get the news out that, that, you know, fatigue is a really important manifestation of PSA. And we're, we're at Janssen. We're really committed to trying to improve all of the multi-domain symptoms of psoriatic arthritis. Well, helping you get the word out is our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation <laughs> with Dr. Alyssa Johnson. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com. Com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com health professional radio.